Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 110 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And this week we are going to make peg stamps. This is a little bit time consuming, but very simple craft. And we're gonna make them out of these tumbling tower game from the Dollar Tree. So this was a dollar. And also for this week, we picked up some colored pads and a black stays on pad uh, for our stash. So what we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to open these, which sounds really silly, but um, the way that I opened the box so that I could use the box as storage once I got my peg stamps done was I just cut down the middle and it does not have to be exact. So I just cut down the middle there and then here at this end also. Just like that. And then just go ahead and cut across from the window here and here. And here. Just like that. And then I'm going to cut up the sides like this from where we cut right across here up the side to the top and again on this side over here now you can either do that or you can cut across the top this way one or the other and then just open it up like this oops i forgot to cut it right here and just be careful with your knife. Don't slip and cut yourself. And then down the edge right here and over here. Basically, I just want to make some flaps so that I can open it up like this and get my blocks out. So then I took out my blocks and then all I did was I just put glue on all of these flaps and folded them in and then it is a case that's exactly the size of our jingle blocks to hold them once we get our peg stamps done because I always like storage so just glue it so it stays together well and just fold these flaps in and put your clamps on there to hold them do the same thing down here any place where it's kind of loose, just put a little glue there and put it on all of the flaps and fold them all in. And like I said, um, put a couple of your, um, not paper clips, but clothespins. Just put some of your clothespins on there and hold it for that glue to dry just so that you have a box. And like I said, you can really cut it anyway, so long as basically what you're doing is just cutting this to where you can fold it down because that just makes things a little sturdier if you have these flaps holding it down. Now, I didn't bring my little clips here, so I'm not gonna be able to put those on there, but I will re-glue it and clip those all down later so that when I'm done with my stamps, they're gonna just slide right back in there and I am going to have this holding case for my um, peg stamps and then you can decorate the outside you can decoupage it and paint it and all of that kind of stuff and then you'll just have all of your little peg stamps just like that righty so then what we're going to do with our stamps or to make our peg stamps to make our pegs is we're just going to open these up and glue two of them together and we're going to do that for all of them and you can do it to your liking. You can do a red one or a red one. You can do a light one and a brown one, or you can do two brown or two light. I like two brown and two white. That's just me. Just glue them down the long side. Glue them together. And then what I did was I put a piece of parchment on my counter, set these all on my counter, put another piece of parchment no, I didn't put parchment on the top because they weren't. I was afraid glue might drip down, so I put parchment on my counter so I wouldn't get anything on my counter. And then I just put these all lined up 
just two glued together just like this and the biggest thing is make sure that one end or the other now these are not all so perfect that both ends are going to be nice and flat so make sure that one end is nice and flat nice and flush with the two pieces they're hard to see they're glued together here just make sure this end is nice and nice and nice and flat and then if this end is just a little bit off, that's okay. We just want one end really flat. Then just set them on your counter, put a heavy book on them, and let them dry really well. And you're going to do that with all of them. Then while they're drying, you can make your little stamps to go on the top. And by the time you're done, you're going to have all these in your box with all these different little stamps on top. And those are what peg stamps are. And I've seen a lot of people have them, but... You know, they're not really cheap. You'd think little teeny tiny stamps, but they come in a jar with all different, you know, shapes or whatever. But they're usually like eight, ten dollars, and I don't want to pay that. So I wanted to make my own. Plus, I really like to make my own things. So you can do it two ways. You can make it with fun foam. And when I do it with fun foam, this is two pieces of fun foam glued together. So I glued two pieces of fun foam together with tacky glue, really smooth, and then I just again put a book on it, let it dry, and then I had two thicknesses of tacky glue. Now this one is something I used a while ago. I don't know why these circles are punched out on one piece and not the other, but you know, I put them I had glued them together, and so this is double thicknesses in spots. And because these are little and tiny, um you only need little spots. So um, one thing you can do with them is you can use your hole punch. Even when they're two thicknesses thick, you can use your hole punch to punch little circles, just like that. And then once you punch though, however many you want, you get them out of there because they have static cling on them. And then you have all these little circles that you can put on your peg stamp. Or you can just cut them with your scissors and just cut any shape. You can cut squares or rectangles. Hearts and leaves. You can cut anything that you want to that will fit on your peg stamp. So there's kind of a leaf. Here's the one we glued together. Will it fit? Yes, it will fit. So see, there's, there's a leaf right there. I can do a few of these little dots on here. I could do this rectangle, or I could make it a square. <coughs> you can do it any way that you want to. So that's one way. So I did half of mine with fun foam. And if you have a punch that, you know, like these will punch through double thickness of, of fun foam, but your regular punches won't. Well, most of them won't. Um, so you can punch it just one thickness of fun foam and then punch another one, one thickness of fun foam, and then put, put one on your peg stamp and put the other one on top of it on the peg stamp. Just so that you've got that lift. You just want a little lift so that you're not getting ink, you know, where you don't want it and then it's touching your paper. So that's fun foam. And then the other way that you can do it is with your um, erasers. And so to cut my erasers and to get more out of them, I just took my peg. Which, what did I just do with it? Here we go. I just took my peg and I just put it right on here and you can either draw around it or just hold it on there take your razor knife and very carefully just go right along the edge of that find your cut and cut all the way through and then hold that up there it's a little bit long Oops, so I'm just going to line it up and cut off this little bit of extra right here. And now I know that this piece of eraser that I have is the same size as the top of my peg. And I glue all of these, the, the rubber and the fun foam, I glue them to the top of my pegs with tacky glue when I'm done with, when I get them ready. So this is our um, eraser that we had. And, um, but in order, you know, you don't have to have this whole thickness. So in order to get twice as many, once I get it cut to size, I just take my razor knife, put it about, oops, put it about in the middle, and then just press straight down. These erasers cut so nicely. Just press all the way down and then cut that last little bit at the very bottom. 
and now I have enough to do two peg stamps. And then you're just going to take your carver and you're going to carve anything that you want. Now you can write on there with a, with a pen first and then carve around it, or you can just um, carve. I really like the organic, like, um, just lines on them. And so I have a few of those, but I think I'm gonna do one with just like, just some little, just some little bits like that out. And I'm gonna turn it as I go, cause I don't want them all to be going in the same direction. And then we'll see what it looks like. It might look cute, it might not. If it doesn't look cute, I can turn it over and use the other side. I'm just kind of digging in and then lifting up and it's kind of making like a little triangle. Except for right there, doesn't want to do it. And if you don't want it to be like really harsh lines on the edges, just go ahead and take some off the edges also. But you can take your time and carve these. I did carve, tried carving a flower again. Still didn't get it quite right, but it looks like a little paper doll person. So I kind of adjusted it a little bit and made it into a paper doll person. So I really couldn't do the, well that was like the round petal flowers. I did do a tulip and I did a feather because feathers are my favorite. And there we go. Do I have enough marks? I think that I probably, I need probably something right here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but this is what it looks like right now. Then what I do before I glue it on my peg is I check it and see if I like it. And then if I don't like it, I can just turn it over and do something on the other side, or I can adjust or make any um, you know corrections that I need to make before I have to deal with it being on the peg stamp. I'm just going to get this out of the way because I don't want that to get into my ink pads. There we go. And I'm just going to, I put some white paper down here. This is just copy paper to test our stamps on. Just going to press that on our ink. Looks like it's covered. Put this one on the top so as I stamp them, I can pick it up and show you. is what that one looks like and I like it so I'm gonna leave it but if I didn't like it I could adjust it some other way since I like it I'm gonna just glue this right onto my peg and let me get the top off my glue I'm gonna find out which end is the smoothest this is my smoothest end so that's where I'm gonna put my glue and then just remember, before you use them, you really need to let them dry also. And there we go. Now that is a peg stamp. And the peg stamps are basically just, they're tiny, tiny stamps that have a nice thing to hold on to so that you can just pick that up and just stamp it with by holding on to that. And it's just so much easier to do it that way than having this little tiny stamp that you're trying to put on a clear block or you're trying to hold on to it and put it on there. So it just makes it, basically it makes a nice handle. And if you don't wanna go get these and you have extra chess pieces at home, I have some peg stamps that I made out of chess pieces and I just cut the, them the same size as the bottom of the chess piece glued them to the bottom of the chess piece and then I would pick those up and use them as pegs. So there is one and I'm going to show you the others. I did make a whole bunch. Um, I made half of them. There's 18 all together that you can make because you have 36 blocks and you glue them together to get 18. So I made nine with the fun foam and I made nine with the um, rubbers. And then I wanted like a stitch and this was somebody else had suggested that. 
and I thought that was a really good idea. So I did one and I it wasn't really it didn't it was too wide and kind of oval shaped to be stitches. So I did another one that was a little bit straighter and thinner and it looks more like stitching on the on the edge of a page. So I'll show you what all of these look like and we'll try some of our we'll try some of our Hampton art pads. I'm trying to find the top to my glue. We'll try some of these colors because I haven't tried them yet. I did open them all and the black one leaked, but other than that, they were all good. Now, I haven't stamped any of my foam ones yet, so I'm really not sure what they're going to look like. I'm just going to rub this on here. It kind of, I can't really tell if it's actually getting on my pad or not. It may just be a really light color. And with my, this being red, I might not be able to see it, so gonna take that and stamp that there oh yes that worked really well then I'll just stamp it off a couple of times that's how I clean my stamps pretty much and so there's my little heart <coughs> excuse me so that's that one we'll try our little square <coughs> That one definitely got on there. That's a very juicy pad. That's good enough. And then I've got one here that's three lines. And I'll lift, we'll stamp them all because you can pretty much see them. And then I'll lift it up and show you close so you can see the colors and everything real well of the stamp pads. And there is our three lines. I've got a triangle. And I did put some parchment between my blocks um, because I picked them up and I was afraid that the glue might still be a little bit wet and stuck them in there. So I put parchment between them so that they wouldn't um, get glued together. one is the red I think that kind of looks like a little arrow go this way maybe it was saying it had to get back in the box so these ink pads are working very well I'm really happy with them I've never had any of these little ink pads before and um, in like listening and talking to a lot of different people um, they really like these smaller ink pads almost better than their large ones unless it's a color that they use all the time because if you have a bunch of large ones and you don't use them all the time you know eventually they're just gonna dry up but then you can reconstitute them And Lindsay Wyrick the frugal crafter has a really good thing on um, how to reconstitute the different types of inks because alcohol inks um, and your permanent inks are alcohol based so they need like rubbing alcohol and then you've got your dye inks and your pigment inks and and she's got a really good thing on like what they are what they mean how they work and um and how to reconstitute them so that's the frugal crafter she's got a great video on that i like that little tulip it's cute and it's a flower that i actually could make And literally, I just freehand cut those things, you know? I mean, they're just so tiny. And then here's the punches that I punched with my hole punch. And you can make this kind of thing in all different designs, even on such a small space. I settled on this one. I really kind of liked this design, but I had tried quite a few before I decided on this one. So I can always make more and make different designs just with little spots. That one's really cute. Okay, so here I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And this one is like a jelly bean. It was supposed to be an oval, but it didn't turn out as an oval, so I adjusted it a little bit and it became a jelly bean. I'm gonna put it this way. Or 
or almost looks maybe like little footprints. That's a really pretty purple too. And then the last one that I have with the Fun Foam Stamps is kind of like a pinwheel. I was thinking maybe I could cut this into like the round petal flower, but when I got it this far, it looked really cool and I decided that I would rather have the pinwheel than a flower that probably wasn't going to turn out. There we go. So that is all of our, that's all of the foam stamps that I made. And then um, I've got the, I'll show you what they look like. So here's the one that we did together really quickly. And then these are foam stamps and the Hampton inks that we got. And they're just really cool and they're great for backgrounds. They're great for like cards. You need just a little bit somewhere. Um, they work really well. And then I have um, the rubber stamps. Let's see if the black still has ink in it because it was leaking. And it does. And I'm glad that we got the permanent black ink, number one, because it's permanent, and number two, because this has a really blue back tone to it. And this is the flower that I tried, but it didn't work. So this way, it looks like a little, um, oh, when you make the paper dolls and they're all cut together in a line. There we go. I was just looking so I could see them so I could put them in a line holding hands. And then here is my feather or leaf. And this is our last Hampton art pad. That one is really, really wet. And that's gray, but it has a little bit of a green dye to it or green tint to it. So they all all of the ink pads work really well. They're very pretty colors. It's nice to have that many colors. And then I'll just, well, let's just grab some more colors because they really are looking pretty. This one is just kind of a starburst. And like I said, I really love these just with the lines on them. I think that that next set that I have over there that I showed you how to put them together, I think that that one um, I'm going to do all like just little line stamps. I want kind of a darker color to do this. Um, this is the, uh, what do you call it, sewing stitches that I thought turned out pretty good. And now the way that I did this is I cut them right on a point on each end and then they actually stick off the edge the corner right here's the corner of my block they stick out just a little bit on both sides and I did that because I know that those stitch lines come out to that point so if I line that up each time that I press it down and I just line that point up with the stitch above it I can actually put them in a line that way so that's that's how I carved those. And then this one is it wasn't as good. I had, you know, it was a learning curve. And so that one it's still a nice Hold on a minute. There. I got some stuff on here and I really don't want to contaminate my ink pads with um it was some of the rubber stuff. And we have three left to go. This one is just lines. And with the lines, you can put them one way and then turn it and put it another way. So it makes like a, a cross hat, cross hitch. And I did a swirl just by taking my little carver. I just stuck it in the middle and then I just turned and turned and turned until I got out to the outside edge. I wasn't sure if it was going to work very well, um, but it worked. It worked just fine. I'm going to use the green again because I've got green on that. 
I had green on that carver and I got it on the stamp. So, and there is that one. And finally, we have the one that we already did. So we don't need to do that one. But that is how you make your own peg stamps and what they can look like. A few ideas on some that you could make. So, you know, if you if you get a little bit stuck, just, you know, just kind of stop and do something else for a little bit. You know, I got to the point where I was like, oh, I don't know what else I want to do. I don't know what else I want to do. But, um, you know, it kept coming to me. Oh, this, oh, that. So, there we go. There are our peg stamps, all of our beautiful color inks, and all of our, oh, I didn't show you this, this one up close. So that's what those look like and what those colors look like. And here's, you know, when you go both ways with your lines, it looks like a, a plaid or something. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making these. Like I said, it's a little bit time consuming. Um, it takes time just to figure out what you're going to carve and, you know, to get them carved and get everything glued together. But it's really worth it. It's really fun. We're going to be using these next week, actually, or any kind of stamps that you have. You don't have to make these. And for next week, what we are going to need, let's see, this week we spent $18. We spent $10 on the stays on, or we allotted $10 for the stays on, $7 for the Hampton Arts, which is their $6.94 or something at Walmart, and a dollar for our Jenga block. So we spent 18, we had 40 dollars and fifty cents in our bank. Um, five dollars of that 18 was our weekly five dollars. So we had to take thirteen dollars out of our bank for this week's items. So we have twenty seven fifty in our bank. This week, what we are going to buy is just white tissue paper. Any white tissue paper. This comes from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. It doesn't matter if it's shiny on one side or on both sides or just white tissue paper. And then we're going to spend $3 on white sheets. Now this one is just, a, I don't know what this is made out of. I couldn't find the tag on it. And um, But when I washed this one, it came off nice and smooth. This one is 100% cotton. And when I washed it, this one, it came out quite wrinkly. It was also new. Um, I mean, it came from the second hand store, but it still had the cardboard in the middle where it was folded up. But this is 100% cotton, so this wrinkles. So it doesn't matter which you have. And we're going to lot $3 for these. I figured that you can, pro I paid 99 cents each for them. So I figured probably for $3, you can at least get one white sheet. Why white? Because we can turn it any color we want it, and we can do anything with it that we want to. Now this, this sheet right here, it's got like a little rust mark on it right there. Doesn't matter. I brought them home. I washed them. Anything that's on them now is a permanent stain. And we're going to stain them anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So... $3 worth of white fabric, however you want to do it, and $1 for the tissue paper is $4 what we're going to spend for next week. So that'll put a dollar back in our bank, and we'll have $28.50 in our bank. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that if you make these, you have fun with them. They really are fun to play with, and I can't wait to use them on, you know, different little pockets and envelopes and things like that that I've been playing with for my journals. Thanks again for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And if you have a place to share it, if you could share the video, that would be great too. I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.